I'm gonna do a book review on Steal Like an Artist today. So keep watching for some great art quotes and great art advice. I really, really like artist books because they're usually a little bit different. Steal Like an Artist is basically the idea that all art, all ideas have been out there. The trick really is taking an idea and displaying it in a new way or making people think about it differently. And, uh, but there really are no new ideas. Everything that you have thought of or every art piece that you have created, someone else has created something similar or thought of something similar. And if you get stuck on this, like, I need a new idea, like, you, you are referencing things from the past, even, and if you don't know what you're referencing, someone else who knows art history a little bit better than you or knows history or a different field a little bit better than you, most likely can come up with something that someone else has done that is just as good or very similar or um, that type of thing. And so I don't remember, I should have looked for it, but there were a couple quotes about like stealing, like writers, if you steal from one source, it's plagiarism, but if you steal from many sources, you're like a genius. And I think that's very, very true with art. Though everything has been done, it's us trying to do things and then failing or trying to do something and then not doing it as well as that person. And the, in that, we bring our own insecurities and our own failures into it. And that's where our unique style comes from. Our unique style is we tried to do what someone else did and we failed. And we combined all this, these things that, like artists tend to collect things. If you um, know any artists, you know that like artists can tend to be hoarders. But the difference between a hoarder and an artist, hoarders collect everything, but artists collect selected things. We collect things that we find beautiful, we collect things that we love, we collect things that are important or significant to us. We don't collect things that we don't care about. And so all these things that we've collected, all these ideas, all everything we've read, everything we've seen, maybe experiences, travel, culture, all of those things come together to create what we're trying to be. And we can't be that because it's already been done. We're not that person. We're different. We've we, we can't quite make it, but that's where our style develops. Our style develops in the, like, the shortfalls. And, and so like, as we try and we try and we try, we, we continue to develop, we continue to get our own style. And it might be good to other people, but to us, we're like, no, we want this, but we don't actually get there. And so it's, I think that's a really neat idea. I don't know where I was going with that, but on. But yeah, so there's that in here. These are the book, these are the chapters on... Um, I'll give you just a second to look at those. Some of them, write the book you want to read. That's kind of a common thing within writing. And I I don't think I'm quite there yet because I don't know what I want to read. Like I want to read, I guess I am doing it at the same time, but I don't have like a, I can't word it. I loved the side projects and hobbies are important because I absolutely agree that we should have many interests. We should be eclectic. We should be well-rounded um, as artists. People talk about going to school for art, and I think artists should go to school. Um, do artists need, if, if you can afford it, and um, if you can afford it and do it responsibly, I do think that artists should all go to college or go to school or continue to learn in their own way, whether it's in a school or not, doesn't really matter. We, like I did art for my main degree, and then my second degree was humanities with African American studies, religious studies, and philosophy. So other things that I'm really, really interested in and those areas have shaped my artwork in so many ways. The things outside of the arts really shaped my art as much or more as my classes in the arts. And so I think that going to school and having, like, if you do art, study something else. Have a minor. Do something else, too, because, and a lot of people are like, oh, you need to do it for a job. Yeah, that's, you do need to eat. You do need to support yourself. There's ways to do that within the arts. We can talk about that more. If you have questions about that, I'll try to do some more videos. I'm still learning. I'm not a pro. I'm in the progress. I'm in... I'm learning. Just as an artist, you should study other areas because those things will come into your art. If you like math, there's a, a really interesting artist who lives locally and he he has like he was a um he was an architect before he's an artist and you can see like his architecture is in his art. Now he just does art full time. Whatever you study, whatever you go to school for, if you're a creative person, you will be using that. Like those are really the things that you're reaching for and learning and surrounding yourself with. And so it's it's great. I think one of my favorite chapters was chapter six and it is the secret, do good work and share it. And I absolutely agree. I think I was having a conversation with an artist friend. So this is a while back, but uh, 
we were talking about how marketing and branding are so important for artists. Like, it, it really is the artists that get their names out there and do things in the community that people buy and love and support. And you'll go into a gallery and be like, oh, I love this specific artist. Like, other artists will be like, why do you like that art so much? And it's because they've been doing their art in public. They invest in the community. They share their work publicly. They do shows. They do demos. They do all of these different things. And that's that's how your art gets out there. Like, I think do great work and share it is kind of, like, as he says, the secret. And it's not really a secret. It's pretty obvious, but it's what we need to be doing. We need to be sharing our work. Even if you are not confident in your work, if you think it's not very good, keep working, do more, but get to a point and just start sharing your work. If you look at my old videos and some of my older bodies of artwork, my, my first two exhibitions, though I'm very, very proud of them, especially my first one, the Make It Plain, um, which is so conceptual and so like the perfect exhibition for a university campus. Like it really was very much an intellectual, um, like a historically based, um, kind of like my senior thesis in a way. And my second show was not like, I'm proud of parts of it, but there's other parts I'm like, oh, I don't really want to share it. But it's out there. It's People, when we moved here, people knew that work of mine. They knew who I was because of that work. And though I'm not super happy with it all, I am glad that I shared it because now I can do my new work and I can develop my name like my name and my branding and all of those things as, as an artist. And I think that branding is so important. The more people can see your work, um, the more that they will love you as an artist and you as a person. And um, if you want more videos on this, I can make a separate video on branding. So I'm, I'm learning. I'm not an expert, but I would love to share with you guys what I have learned. Another thing is be boring. Uh, be boring in your life so you can create excellent work. Uh, put everything you have into your work. And I, I really like that. I don't know if it's my personality or not because I like doing things. I like going places. I like seeing things. That's where my inspiration comes from. But after I've been inspired, I do need to just go and be alone for a while. Like... Um, be alone for a couple days, just be in my studio and produce work, um, make videos. Video making like really helps me verbalize and um, say what, it helps me organize things because I am a verbal processor and so like a lot of my videos are just me talking and me figuring out things for myself. So if I say something that's kind of ridiculous, it's probably because I'm working through it in my own head. I'm going to show you just some of the pages. I'll do like a short flip through. I don't want to give away too much. I think you should read it for yourself. So he has sketches from his sketchbooks and uh, he talks about like doing a daily log. There you, there you go, do a log book. Um, keep your day job. He talks about like how working and being in the community is important. I, for me, I do a lot of volunteering and I, I need um, that community engagement. Um, make friends, ignore enemies, I like that. One of my favorite quotes from working in treatment, working with uh, adults with disabilities, and also like uh, troubled teens is uh, be, uh, referencing behaviorism and it's reward the best, ignore the rest. And if there's a behavior you don't want to promote, d ignore it, like it'll go away. Um, and that's not always true, like different people groups you can do that more with, but uh, if people want attention, then yelling at them for doing something wrong is exactly what they want. They're just gonna keep doing that behavior. But anyways, total side note, Step away from the screen. This is what I need to work on. I do a lot with the computer and, but having my computer dead and broken for like two years maybe has helped me with this. We'll see if I, we'll see if I, if I stop doing YouTube videos for like a month or two, this is why I just needed to put my computer away and be completely uh, analog and not digital for a while. But I don't, I won't do that for a while. I'll keep making videos as much as I can, I promise, because I love them. But uh, yeah, so this is a great book. Do check it out. Read it. 